I don't normally do parts to videos because this is quite a long process. I thought I'd break it down into parts. So I'm beginning with the mesh mixer and how I created the 3D file for the squiggoth. Starts off with the mammoth body and this time I'm going to use this squig head which is another free file and I'll share the, the file for this squig and the mammoth in the description. So now I'm going to open them in mesh mixer and to start with I'm going to work on the mammoth's body uh, open that as an individual file and I'm going to click make solid. This kind of simplifies the, the surface and the, the mesh of the 3D model. So it's like solid accuracy. If you bump that up and the mesh density, you would bump that up, you're going to get a lot more detail out of the model. Um, I don't want a huge amount of detail because I want it to be quite smooth rather than hairy. So I'm going to get rid of the hair. So I've made it a solid, which uh, creates a second file. As you can see there, there's an object browser which opened. Uh, what I want to do is get rid of these little bumps around the body, uh, smooth out some of the areas as well. I'm just using the sculpt tool. Um, if you hold shift, it goes into flatten, and if you hold control, it goes into dig. So it kind of digs a hole, um, and if you just leave, don't press anything, it increases the mass. So I'm just gonna get rid of those bumps and smooth out some of the kind of surface of the, mam uh, the mammoth's body a bit to make it look a bit more skin-like rather than hair-like. I'm now gonna add some veins using the sculpt tool. I've upped the strength and reduced the size of my brush and I'm going to just kind of add some random veins and work into this more. And the more you kind of work into it, the more it kind of blends together. It does look a bit crazy at first and stands out quite a lot, but as you can see when I'm working into it, it does uh, it does get to calm down quite a bit. Now I want to get some more definition on the toenails because I think the toenails are quite important. I'm just going to dig in here using control and clicking, control and left click. Uh, with my brush and now I'm just clicking normally on the toes just to get a bit of extent just to increase the mass there on the toes and uh, do the same for the other foot yeah just kind of dig away add a bit of detail add some mass to the toenails themselves to get them a bit more pointy um, and then smooth it out using the shift as well to make it a bit less uh, less weird looking it, it takes a bit of working into right so now I'm opening it in blender so that I can add a modifier called decimate so go to add modifier decimate and then as you can see the face count is 961,356 and I want to reduce that so I'm going to change the rate down to 0 0.02 which reduces my face rate down to 192,000 which is substantially smaller but it doesn't affect the detail on the model. Uh, it just means that the model is going to be a lot easier to manipulate in Mesh Mixer because there's much less information for the computer to work through. I'm going to apply that and, and then export the STL and, and open it again in Mesh Mixer. I'm going to work on the pose. So previously I just kept the pose as it was, but this time I want it kind of rearing up. So what I'm gonna use is the mirror tool and I'm gonna kind of copy the, the side which is already lifted uh, onto the other side and I'm gonna match it along the spine here. I'm not so fussed about the neck because this is obviously gonna have a head on it. Here's an area where it overlapped. You can just kind of select that and delete it. Um, and here where you kind of see the overlaps as well, you just go into the sculpt and I'm just going to smooth that down uh, using shift and the sculpt tool. Okay, so now I'm going to try and shift the, the legs a little bit so they're slightly different and I'm going to use the move brush tool and this kind of just shifts the mesh a little bit and I'm just going to do it gradually bit by bit just to give it a, a little bit of difference from the other side. Yeah, be careful not to distort it too much. Right now I want to work on the head. Um, so I'm gonna get the rough position of the head and scale. I'm quite happy with the scale of it um, compared to the body. I think the heads should be colossal like this because they're squigs. Um, so you get it roughly in position and then we need to basically cut its legs off and then blend it together. So get the isolated squig go into the select mode and you can just select the feet and push F and that will remove and fill and then just work your way up the legs in uh, bit by bit I think if you try and do too much at once it sometimes doesn't work so it's worth doing just bit by bit so here I'm just going to show you with the select tool you can kind of select an area here and you can push F and then it can choose how you want it to, to smooth out so here I'm just going to reduce the scale to 0 0.1 so it's nice and flat uh, it's obviously gone very, very, very smooth at this stage, but you can add a bit of detail with the sculpt tool um, and kind of blend it together or mesh it together with the other, the other piece. So yeah, I'm going to go into the sculpt tool 
I'm gonna add a couple of bumps and lines and dents and smooth it out. Just get it a bit rough so that it kind of all blends into one, one kind of thing. You don't have to be crazy here. Obviously working with something that's not a squig, this would be a bit more tricky. Just cause it's like a bumpy, warty skin, it's not so difficult to kind of replicate. Right, now I want to dig out the throat so that, I've, that I can see right down its throat. So I'm just gonna hold control and sculpt way from the body here. Um, I'm gonna increase the mass actually under the tongue so that there's not a gap, just so that it's a bit easier to print. Uh, smooth it down so it doesn't pop through the tongue, but just uh, get rid of the gap under the tongue there just so that it's not um, not causing issues when I, when I go to print it. Um, makes it a little bit easier. So well, now I'm just trying to make the squig as a, on a, as a whole, as a complete mass. Um, you can just add a bit of detail here and there. And here I'm just adding some more bumps and uh, warts and grooves and dents and veins and all sorts to the skin surface, just giving it a bit of texture. It's all gonna be covered in armor, so it's not so important, but it's just nice to have a bit of variation and definition compared to just being too, too smooth. I think the 3D printer really likes organic shapes more than uh, <laughs> more than mechanical shapes it seems like it would print mechanical shapes better but it doesn't it actually likes organic shapes and they're a lot more forgiving when you go to print it i'm adding the tail just as it comes um i'm going to solidify it to get rid of the hair but basically put the tail in place make a solid same as the body and then just makes it makes it a bit smoother um then i want to combine it all together so I'm going to select everything and in edit gives you the option to combine. I want to add a bit of definition onto this eye. I think there's a, there's a scar there and I thought it'd be nice to kind of exaggerate that a bit. Uh, just give it a bit of variation. And you don't need to do this. I just thought it'd be quite nice to have a bit of a meaner looking squig by giving it a nasty scar on its eye. And just, just experiment, just experiment with the brushes and the different methods of, of holding shift to smooth it and holding control to dig, it, dig into it. Um, or just adding stuff by just not holding anything and just left clicking. So yeah, I'm adding a couple of scratches down its face here. Cool. I'm still not quite happy with the position of the, uh, of the squig. I want it more upright. So I've repositioned the body a bit further back. That's the, the position I want it to be in, but I want the feet obviously to be flat on the ground. So I'm going to cut the feet off using the plane cut. Then I click on the body and I do separate planes. And this will separate the feet from the body. Now I'm just gonna select the feet and rotate them so that they're flat on the ground. It's kind of roughly right, get the position so that you're happy with it. And then what I'm gonna need to do is obviously smooth out that connection where the, where the feet are going to be reconnected to the, to the legs and body. But I just wanted to have uh, have it kind of bucking up more than it than it was. So what I do is I then select everything, combine, hold Control and A when you go to select, and then I'm going to go to modify and clear face groups, make a solid. So now it's all combined together, make a solid. I'm going to bump up the accuracy so that keeps all the detail, um, but it fills in a bit of those weird bits on the on the, where the legs met. So now I can go into the sculpt mode and blend it together without, if I hadn't made it a solid, basically if I start doing this smoothing effect here, it would kind of eat away at the different planes rather than making it one plane and, and bridging the gap. So it's just a way to kind of bridge the gap between the two separated planes um, by making it solid and then you can kind of work into it with the sculpt tool so it's nice and smooth and, and cleans it all up. There's a couple of weird bits here that I saw had just been eaten away, so I'm just going to fill them in with the brush um, on both sides here, so it's not so strange. And that's kind of roughly, roughly right. There's a, an orc for scale, and there's my original squiggoth for scale again. Not happy with the size, I want it to be absolutely colossal. I want this one to be an absolute gargantuan squiggoth. So I'm going to increase the size, uh, keeping them up there so I can compare it. Um, I've also obviously printed the other one, so I know how big that is. And I'm much happier with the si this size that this is going to be. It's going to be big, much bigger than the other one, which is great. It's also got a much meaner looking face. Right, to do the armor, um, I'm just going to be a bit cheeky and just use most of the armor from my previous squig. Uh, this is all stuff from Gear Guts Workshop, so 100% recommend going to check 
them out. They basically release loads of models every month uh, on, on their Patreon. Their models are fantastic. If you have a 3D printer, uh, go check them out. If you don't have a 3D printer, they still offer a website on the GearGuts Mech Shop website. You can still buy their models. There's a huge amount of variety on there as well. So definitely go check them out just for uh, inspiration. If you just want to get some inspiration for, uh, for making your own or kit bashing orcs. This squig's slightly larger than the other one, so I'm going to make everything a little bit bigger. Um, I'm going to give it a bit of variety as well. Uh, once this is printed, I can add some glyphs and other plates and bits and bobs to make it a bit more unique. Um, but for the time being, just to print, I'm going to keep it nice and simple and just repeat most of the armor from the other one. Um, I've positioned the shoulder pads in a different place, the chest plate, added some different plates here and there, but it's more or less the same as the other squig. Um, what I thought was lacking on the last squig were chains and ropes or anything to sh damage to show that where the armor would hang to make it realistic. So I'm going to try something out here. I'm going to add some chains, um, but make sure that they are kind of flush with the skin. Um, these are going to be printed with the FDM printer, so rather than the resin printer. I think it will be fine with these chains on this scale. When it's printing FDM, it kind of bridges the gaps a little bit more successfully than the uh, resin. So this should be fine. Um, we shall see. Uh, for the back, I just want to make a flat area that I can build the hood onto. Um, so I'm just going to add a geometric shape um, and then smooth out the back using the sculpt tool so that it's uh, got a flat surface so that when I do print it, I can uh, just add the holder uh, later down the line. I'm going to work on just the squig for now. What I want to do here is I'm going to try and add a kind of big belt um, around its around its waist, midriff. I'm just going to use a cylinder and roughly get it in place, make it nice and big, um, and then obviously narrow so it's more like a kind of band. Put it in position, and then I'm quite simply just going to go into the, with the sculpt tool and just reduce its size using control and clicking and then also shift and click to smooth it out and make it kind of a bit more like a strap um, against the body so it's just like a big chunky bit of leather or um, other material that's just they just used to kind of strap the hold on to the back so I'm playing around with how the howler is going to be I just get a, get a rough idea of sizes and I found this STL file for a Thunderhawk gunship and one day maybe I'll make a giant squig with wings I've seen a couple of them online they look fantastic but today that's not gonna happen so what I want to do now is open it in 3d builder uh, as a complete file run it through 3d builder which is a fantastic free program on Microsoft and when you open it in 3d builder it gives you the option the bottom right there there's like a little spanner that opens uh, one or more objects are individually defined uh, click here to repair it basically just means it's not non-manifold which means it's got gaps and holes and potential errors I've never seen any noticeable changes when you've run a repair, but it's definitely worth doing this before you try and print it or split it up to be printed. So yeah, so that's kind of it. This this uh, mean guy, he's, he's looking very big. And uh, in the next video, I'm going to show you how I'm going to separate it into pieces so that it can be printed. I want the head to be printed on the resin printer to retain the detail. Um, that's going to have to be divided into three because it's so big. And the torso, legs and all that is going to be printed on the FDM printer, the end of three. If I print it with the armor on, it's just a lot easier to, to work with uh, down the line. And I've added that belt in, which gives me a perfect area to split the body in two. I'm pretty sure I can print the front and back halves um, complete. So that shouldn't be too much effort for the FDM printer. It will take about 30 hours to print. But anyway, that's going to be in part two. Thanks for watching part one. Any questions, drop them in the comments and I can try and answer them for you. Let me know what you think. Cheers. Bye.